Welcome back to the Law Be With You podcast show. Hope everyone's keeping safe and sound in these times. Just gonna talk to you guys about Star Wars again. I know there's a lot of Star Wars geeks and fans who listen to this podcast. May the force be with you. I've been a big Star Wars fan for a long time. Grew up on the original Star Wars trilogy. Uh, we're talking the 80s now, really. I know they started late 70s, but I'm talking watching them in the 80s. And Star Wars was always considered um, an, an amazing franchise. Out of this world, exciting, relevant, interesting. Um, and having strong male and female characters. And for me, I am going to talk a little bit of this article that I've that I've wrote on the Geeks and Gamers, or two Geeks and Gamers, shall I say, about, and it's the argument against the sequel trilogy era. My first article I read to you in the previous podcast was a positive argument for it. Now, this is my critical argument uh, about the sequel trilogy era. Before I really go into the article, though, I, I want to talk to you about some feelings and thoughts on Star Wars and some of the things that seem to be coming out of Disney Lucas film, especially with Kathleen Kennedy, who is the president of Lucasfilm. Uh, she was she succeeded Luke, uh, George Lucas, and essentially was put in place to to continue to do a great job with the new sequel trilogy, but also all the other projects that Star Wars are doing. There's been a lot of reports of difficulties within the Lucasfilm camp a lot of issues with identity politics and that's come out in the media with Gina Carano um, leaving the Mandalorian TV show well essentially she, she was fired from the Mandalorian TV show um, and there seems to be a lot of issues within the camp reports of Kathleen Kennedy producing an environment that is not a fun environment for the guys over there at the show. Um, a lot of issues with the fans, a lot of division with the fans, um, rhetoric coming out towards the fans that she's not really appreciating the fan base. Uh, I think some of it comes across as, well, most of it I would say comes across as identity politics and it's, it's how you kind of view identity politics. Should identity politics be in Star Wars or any any franchise? If you're saying, well, what about representation? Then I would say, yeah, representation matters. I would say we should ha- see a diversity within any franchise. Uh, as a black Star Wars fan, I want to see awesome black characters but not in a forced way, not in a way that's artificial, not in a way that's lazy or poorly written, and not in a way that goes against the previous storylines and it looks weird and looks out of place. I want to see black fan, uh, black characters that look, that are written in a way that respects the canon, respects the law of Star Wars, respects the, tra- the traditions so i want to see the legacy characters respected so for me for example the character of finn uh, i was looking forward to seeing finn's character in the force awakens in a major way but then as i've watched the sequel trilogy movies including the last jedi and the rise of skywalker i feel that the finn character has been completely disrespected and John Boyega, who's a great actor, has if he if he could speak freely about it, I think he'd probably say that he wasn't happy with some of the major decisions written for Finn's character in the new sequel trilogy. I think he'd be if he could be candid and really honest about it. I think he'd say that there's been a lot of intervention from Kathleen Kennedy and and others within that camp, and it was to the detriment of the Finn character and it was to the detriment of the franchise as a whole. 
identity politics is a big thing at the moment being seen to have diversity is very very important to hollywood in our contemporary times and it's important to have diversity i personally believe that that representation matters 100 percent. you have to see yourself in the media you have to see yourself in books you have to see yourself in tv shows you have to see people that look like you characters that look like you doing awesome things as heroes as archetypal heroes it's really important and back in the day probably even back in the 90s certainly back in the 80s and and, and even back 70s and and 60s and before that there was a lack of black and colored characters characters from ethnic minorities or different backgrounds there was a lack of heroes and central protagonists that were people of color that were black people there was a lack of it um i still enjoyed franchises that didn't have a major black character i still enjoyed it if it was written well and well acted i still enjoyed it but when i saw uh, um a tv show or movie that showed a well-written black character i was really excited i was like oh wow this is awesome this is kind of hang on a minute this is kind of new like there's a guy that looks like me and he's an awesome character wow when i saw lando calories in in star wars and and i thought oh lando's a good character it's a black guy wow that's awesome it didn't mean that Lando was my favourite character in the, in the whole of the franchise. I was I was a big Luke Skywalker fan because I wanted to be a Jedi. I wanted to use the Force. So it didn't mean that Lando was my favourite character because I I gravitated towards the archetypal hero uh, character. So I gravitated towards Luke. Um, but I appreciated Lando. I appreciated Lando's character in there. Um, I felt his character was written well. He balanced. He was very much a kind of. He balanced really well against Han Solo because they were both similar characters in a way. They were both roguish con artists, a bit like Jacob from the Bible, a bit of a con artist, a bit of a trickster. And so, yeah, totally gravitated towards that. But yeah, it's important. Representation really matters and. Kennedy, I think Kathleen Kennedy's wanted to push that to its extreme, but it's going to the point of sort of tokenism. It's going to a point of where you're having characters based on maybe their sexuality, maybe based on their politics, their political ideologies, rather than because it's a great character or because it's written well or because they're a great actor. And I think when it's a forced diversity to the point where it's become identity politics, that's when it doesn't work. And in the Star Wars franchise, the solo movie lost money. The Last Jedi, the figures were down when it comes to the overall takings on the money. And it got even worse with The Last Jedi. The, it, it, it showed that the direction they're going depowering Luke Skywalker making him a grumpy old man making him somebody that isn't the Luke that we know from the original movies making him a Luke that is underpowered grumpy languishing as a hermit on some island off somewhere and it's just like hang on a minute guys this isn't Kathleen Ryan Johnson who was the director of The Last Jedi this isn't Luke Skywalker even Mark Hamill said in an interview is this how you see Luke Mark Hamill bless him he couldn't do anything about it you know he's, he's in contract he has to play the role that, they're, that they've written for him he, there's not much he could do but he was shocked he's like is this how you see Luke 
Luke, who wouldn't turn against his own father, who was an evil tyrant, Darth Vader, Luke saw the good in him. But yet, in the movies, as we find out in The Last Jedi, he was willing to to you know attack his nephew in his sleep because he felt you know a disturbance in the force that his future wasn't going to be great so he so he's got fire up his lightsaber okay i'll just young ben here who's sleeping by the way i'll do, i'll deal with him and he, ooh, i'll change my mind at the last minute well i don't think luke would have done that if he's not going to do if he's not going to really go that much against vader is he really going to do that to young ben his nephew in his sleep is he really i don't think he is so i think there needs to be a process of kind of healing it's a nice word isn't it healing there needs to be a sort of a meeting the fans the fandom halfway with with kathleen kennedy and star wars and the guys running disney who obviously own lucasfilm since george lucas sold it there needs to be there needs to be some positive changes um representation matters also we want to see strong female characters as well but it doesn't mean that the male characters have to be put down so that the female characters are elevated we saw that a lot in the last jedi uh we saw that the male characters were no good they made a lot of mistakes um poe making silly errors taking on a, a dreadnought uh, starship star cruiser by himself and getting loads of their ships completely destroyed bizarre decision made him look reckless and foolish and so yeah uh finn who i really had high hopes for ended up being a comic side character but in the first movie, in all the advertising for the first film, he was the promotional Jedi. He ends up being a, a side character who is a bit of comic relief. That's not diversity for me. Advertising this guy as the central protagonist Jedi hero, who I was hoping would work alongside Luke Skywalker. And he ends up being a comedian side character that whose role ends up doing nothing goes off to canto bite in the in the in the film and does nothing what kind of what kind of storytelling is this so i think there's a lot of issues in the sequel trilogy and i think going forward we can you know if you look at the mandalorian which is john favreau his project that is that is more like the star wars that i would expect 